Hello again YouTubers and today I'm going to do another fossil thing like I did before once. I uh, hope to make a series of them. Um, today we're going to be look, looking at Mericoidodons. Now Mericoidodons also known as Oreodonts. <clears throat> I picked on this particular species for well one main reason and that's because I've, I've got one here. Now, of course we have had many tens of thousands of different species of mammals, but this was a mammal. It uh, lived, or at least uh, originated from a period of history known as the Eocene, which was around about uh, 50 million years ago, when they probably started appearing in one form or another. And then uh, they went on, particularly during the, during the Oligocene, a period of, uh, from about 23 to 38 million years ago, that sort of period, um, was probably their heyday. But they did in fact continue on in one speed, one type or another, because they did subspecies into about 50 different subspecies. Um, they did carry on probably up to about 4 million years ago. So, uh, so they're quite an important creature that lived a very, very long time in the history of the planet of evolution and i'm putting this up close so you can have a good look at its teeth now if you look just just here that's it that would have been the eye when i have my finger and ears here let me have a good look at the now have a look at these teeth look at these wonderful large canine front teeth <clears throat> and then it goes on into these molars if you can see them. i'm going to get nice and close and steady so it's a wonderful molar. this in fact was a um, cud chewing grass eating herbivore even though it still has the remnants of a much earlier carnivorous existence from a ancestor um, as i say this would have been the ears just here about the size of a large dog or perhaps a small sheep, this one. But, hello, hello. Anyway, but, I not put myself off, is there? Uh, they come from a group of animals known as artiodactyls. Now, <clears throat> I'm always doing that. I must get some water next time I come out here. Uh, artiodactyls, even toed ungulates. Now, these, these are the uh, animals from which we get uh, llamas, camels, um, those sort of sure footed, hoof footed creatures, and this was one of their ancestors. We're always being asked where are these missing links? Where are these, uh, where are these fossils? Well, this is one of them. I mean, there's many, many different fossils that, as I've said this before, and many people do, but the thing is, how many oreodonts have you actually seen? You know. Um, they're not the sort of thing you see every day, and when you handle one, oh, wonderful, love this. I was very lucky to acquire this one, so obviously I've done a bit of research on them. But hands up, who's actually heard of Oreodonts and um, or uh, Mericoidodons, as they should officially be known? How many of you are there out there? Well, I'm sure some of you put your hands up and said, "Yes, I've heard of those." But uh, perhaps if you're American, because that's of course. Uh, the area they're found in is America today anyway, the uh, fossils, and they would have been uh, out on the plains, um, a large herd grazing animal, much like we see in the African plains today. Uh, they were obviously hunted, and we know this because we found areas, I say we, I wasn't actually amongst them, but uh, areas have been found um, of bones of these, these animals which are in various states of being chewed and usually in a sort of a den area so they're probably hunted by those den making sort of animals like uh, wild dogs or something similar or bear like creatures however they did have predators and uh, were very very successful nonetheless and we have more than 50 subspecies of them ranging from ones that are about the size of a small dog right up to the size of cattle and all in the various different subspecies groups. And this is just obviously the ones that have been found in fossil form. 
they diversified and diversified very well. We know that uh, some of them will have lived in areas of say woodland, on the edge, certainly on the edges of woodland, others in mountainous areas, others went uh, to live in a semi-aquatic lifestyle, a little bit uh, like hippos or, or those uh, large coipus and the like. However, um, they had, right, as you see, a very short face, this tusk-like canine, canine teeth. Uh, they were quite heavily bodied for the size. They had long tails, they had uh, short feet with those four toed hooves. Um, and as I say, they, they were widespread. Okay, so this is a short video. You can't cover everything in evolution in one video. But the fact that uh, I put this already on to you has given us something to think about. These species diversified. They diversified quite well, and I'd say they diversified well because of their very nature of being a roaming prairie type of animal. Now that would have driven them into very many areas, uh, some mountainous, some uh, aquatic, subaquatic. Again, it would have probably come across uh, areas like de almost desert-like, where uh, food was scarce and these, these hoof, hooves that they developed um, through an evolutionary path would have given them the sure footedness in mountains, it would have given them uh, an advantage in areas like deserts where they could have uh, perhaps last longer or move better over longest distances so they could get to areas of food. Um, but where they were back on the plains, back on the prairies, um, savannas if you like, now it's far more likely that there they would have uh, been open to um, a new species coming along of rather well-equipped hunters and well-equipped uh, powerful creatures that uh, eventually was going to drive them away from that area. But the subspecies that evolved would have carried on to in eventually to become another species through subspeciation. So where these things are out there, these things are always out there. These, when I'm told that uh, where these missing links, they are out there. You're not going to find every single one. There would be billions of them, but um, because you have to get the ones that just fossilized. And in some areas, it's very difficult for things to fossilize. In other areas, it's much easier. Which is probably why we find quite so many oreodonts because uh, they have managed to wander around and uh, go to different areas. So, uh, good old oreodonts. Um, hopefully I'll be able to bring up some other species later we can discuss and talk about, but uh, in the meantime, peace.